We begin with a major developing story we've been tracking all day. A shooting rampage in West Texas. Five people killed and 21 others hurt, including three police officers. The shooter, identified as a male in his 30s, was later killed near a movie theater in Odessa, Texas. Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for staying up late with us. I'm Tim Pham. Police say it began with a traffic stop between the cities of Midland and Odessa. They say the gunman shot the trooper who stopped him and then went on a shooting spree firing randomly. At one point, the shooter ditched the car for a stolen post office truck. One witness captured cell phone video just seconds before police shot the suspect. We do want to warn you, some might find this clip disturbing. Oh God, they're shooting right there. Oh, he hits the barrier. Get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Stand still. He's shooting him, he's shooting him. So CBS affiliate KOSA was on the air broadcasting from a local mall when reporters were forced to evacuate during the frantic search for the gunman. New at 10 tonight, we're hearing from some of the witnesses who saw the chaotic scene unfold. So I put my car in park and I jumped out thinking maybe she needed CPR or something. When I had walked up to her, she was already gone. So that's when I got it. I started walking to my car and the people that were huddled crying told me to get in my car and go home because there was an active shooter still on the street. You're seeing the scary uh, moments oh, there. The Police say they are still looking for a motive. A new report out tonight shows that the West Texas shooting brings the number of mass killings in the U.S. so far this year to 25, which is as many mass killings as in all of 2018. We'll continue to keep you updated on this developing story throughout the night on creme.com. Now to Hurricane Dorian, the Category 4 storm is set to bring life-threatening storm surges to parts of the Bahamas before threatening Florida and the southeastern U.S. Let's get right to meteorologist Michelle Boss with an explanation and the latest track. Michelle. aware of how hurricanes can bring destructive winds, flooding rains, and even sometimes tornadoes. But what is a storm surge? Well, as a hurricane like Dorian moves over the ocean surface, winds of 150 miles per hour are moving over the ocean waters and actually pushing the water forward ahead of the storm, piling it up. It's not a problem in the open ocean, but as it gets towards land, this water has nowhere to go but on shore. Right now, storm surge forecast for the Abacos Islands and the Grand Bahama Island are 15 to 20 feet. You can see storm surges that high would definitely cause very dangerous situations. All right, here's the latest track on Dorian right now. Latest forecasts are actually pulling it a little bit away from a direct hit from the Florida coastline. But again, this is just a forecast. That red hurricane icon shows the current National Hurricane Center forecast track. But anywhere within that white outlined area, is a uh, area that the potentially the hurricane could move in. It is currently a category four storm with winds of 150 miles per hour and could be approaching the Florida coast by Monday morning. Michelle, thank you. Communities are bracing for the storm. Dorian shut down most major resorts in the Bahamas and forced evacuations on much of the northern shore and low lying islands today. Any remaining tourists were sent to government shelters in schools, churches and other buildings. Florida is not expected to see tropical storm force winds until Tuesday or Wednesday, but people are still urged to be prepared. People who live in mobile home parks, low lying areas and along the beach could see mandatory evacuation orders. Meantime, Floridians are facing fuel shortages already. A number of gas stations up and down Florida's east coast from Jacksonville to Miami have already run out. In an effort to restock supplies, Governor Ron DeSantis ordered highway patrol cars to escort tanker trucks to their destinations. Some even came from outside of the state. NASA also moved its mobile launcher to the Kennedy Space Center and now has orders to evacuate most of its staff by tomorrow morning. Florida's governor is urging Floridians to stay vigilant and declared a state of emergency. There is still significant chance uh, of a strike on the state of Florida. If you look at that cone, um, anyone inside that cone uh, needs to be prepared. 
Well, you have to check out these incredible images next. We have here the International Space Station captured footage of the Category 4 hurricane over the Atlantic Ocean this morning. The National Hurricane Center in Miami said maximum sustained winds of Dorian reach 150 miles per hour this afternoon, just slightly less than the wind speed that would make it considered a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane. A plane full of weather instruments flew into the eye of the hurricane Friday for a closer look at what could be in store for Florida. Meanwhile, hundreds of flights in and out of Florida have been canceled. Daytona Beach International Airport is planning to stop flight operations tomorrow night, and Orlando International says it will halt flights early Monday morning. Back here at home, Montana native Army Sergeant First Class Brian Sharp was welcomed to Coeur d'Alene yesterday with people lined up and down Highway 95. It was just earlier this year when Sharp and fellow Green Berets were on a mission in Afghanistan when they were attacked. Two of Sharp's fellow soldiers were killed in battle. Sharp was shot several times and nearly died in the field. Sharp thanked the community today and said, My family and I are truly humbled by your unwavering support and patriotism. Your display of community has lifted the spirits of my family and the families of the fallen. I would have never asked for such an event, but I've come to find peace in that this event wasn't just for me and my family. Rather, it was for all of our operators still fighting evil worldwide. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office, though, is warning the public that a GoFundMe account claiming to benefit Sergeant Sharp's family is a scam. The Sheriff's Office said it received reports about the GoFundMe account set up in Sharp's name and that Sharp's family advises they did not set up the account. The family says it appears Sharp's mother's Facebook account was actually hacked and someone opened the GoFundMe page under her account. Well, it's been a few years since Spokane Shock played arena football, so you can imagine when the team's Facebook page became active again, it drew a lot of attention and conversation. The team might just get revived just in time for the 2020 season, and Karthik Venkatraman joins us now with what's happening. So what's going on, Karthik? Jim, it's alive! The Spokane Shock's old Facebook page is active for the first time in two years. It's be believed that the team is making a comeback. We're working to confirm if that's true. Posts on the Facebook page have been of former players and hype videos with highlights. In, Facebook, in a Facebook comment, the team posted, prepare to be shocked. Fans on the page have been mostly excited, it seems. The Spokane Shock played in the Lilac City as an AF2 team, which was the Arena Football Developmental League from 2005 to 2009. And the team was then a part of the Arena Football League from 2010 to 2015. So we'll see if it happens. Nothing official from the Facebook page or from the IFL. Back to you, Tim.